सो हेलो फ्रेंड्स नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द गैस्ट्रिक एडनो कार्सिनम ओके इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द एक्यूट गैस्ट्राइटिस एंड अदर इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ इस ऑफ एगस ओके सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग विद द स्टमक पैथोलॉजी ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द गैस्ट्रिक एडिनो कार्सिनोमा दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर योर सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन एज वेल एज फॉर योर पी जी एग्जामिनेशन ओके सो दिस एडिनो कार्सिनोमा बेसिकली इज द मोस्ट कॉमन मेलेग्नेंसी ऑफ द स्टमक ओके सो गैस्ट्रिक एडिनो कार्सिनोमा इज द मोस्ट कॉमन मेलेग्नेंसी ऑफ योर स्टमक ओके सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द मेलेग्नेंसी ऑफ द स्टमक देन दिस इज योर मोस्ट कॉमन मेलेग्नेंसी ऑफ द स्टमक गैस्ट्रिक एडिनो कार्सिनोमा ओके एंड इट कंप्राइज अबाउट नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ ऑल द गैस्ट्रिक कैंसर्स ओके सो गैस्ट्रिक कार्सिनोमा गैस्ट्रिक एडिनो कार्सिनोमा कंप्राइज योर नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ ऑल द गैस्ट्रिक कैंसर्स नाउ Uh, this is the basic introduction now we will discuss about the epidemiology okay so it is more common in japan and when you talk about the sex it is more common in males okay now there is overall decrease in the incidence of gastric cancer is seen and this is uh, basically due to decrease h pylori prevalence okay because of decrease h pylori infection first reason is this the second reason is due to decrease consumption of dietary carcinogen such as your in nitroso compounds okay in nitroso compounds your benzo compounds basically these are the dietary carcinogens but uh, there is a gradual decrease in the consumption of these compounds in nitroso compound benzo compounds okay and then c is uh, your reduced use of salt okay use of salt has been decreased use of uh, smoking food had been decreased okay and uh, uh, there is also decrease uh, due to Uh, availability of your refrigerator okay because due to this we do not use just many preservatives so these are the things which have uh, helped to reduce the incidence of gastric endocarcinoma okay these are the some points which have uh, helped to reduce the incidence of gastric carcinoma gastric adenocarcinoma okay now one more point if you take uh, uh, greeny leafy vegetables and citrus fruits that basically contain antioxidant such as vitamin c vitamin a and beta ca carotene then it will also decrease the incidence okay so green vegetables and certain vitamins will also help to decrease the incidence so this is the basic epidemiology okay now we are going for the basic uh, pathogenesis of the gastric adenocarcinoma so first we will discuss what are the risk factors for the gastric adenocarcinoma okay and we have divided the risk factor into three group the first is your environmental factor the second is your host factor then we will discuss about the genetic factor so first coming to the environmental factors so what are the environmental factors which are basically regulating your gastric and which are promoting your gastric carcinoma so in environmental factor the first important is your h pylori infection if there is h pylori infection that will promote the chances of the gastric adenocarcinoma then your dietary dietary factor also play a very important role as we have discussed okay then low socio economic status okay in low socio economic status this disease is prevalent because in low socio economic status uh, the person will consume uh, less protein okay not uh, able to buy the vitamins clear and the fourth group is rubber and coal workers so these are the four environmental factors which are increasing the incidence of your gastric adenocarcinoma then the next is your host factors so okay so in host factors first is your chronic gastritis first is your chronic gastritis okay and the another one is pernicious anemia clear the second one if there is partial gastrectomy okay because past partial gastrectomy will uh, favor bile reflux okay there is bile reflux and that may predispose to cancer the third one is your gastric dysplasia gastric dysplasia also predisposes to your gastric adenocarcinoma the fourth point is your mene triads disease okay mene triads disease that is hypertrophic gastropathy the fifth is your barrett esophagus so you can remember like this uh, you i am giving a mnemonics bc mg okay bc mg so you can remember like this bc mg b for barrett esophagus c for chronic uh, gastritis okay m for mene triads disease and g for gastric dysplasia and partial gastrectomy clear and for this you can remember like sdli sdl that is good lipid okay so sdlr you can remember like this h h pylori dietary factors okay then l low low, low socio economic status then rubber and coal workers okay so these two are the environmental and host factors now the next which i am going to discuss is your genetic factors clear so in genetic factors if person belongs to blood group a okay or 
if there is history of familial gastric cancer or if there is uh, history of hnpcc syndrome okay this all will uh, predispose to the development of gastric adenocarcinoma so till now we have discussed about the uh, certain risk factors for the gastric carcinoma now we will discuss the basic pathogenesis what is the basic pathogenesis behind the gastric carcinoma okay so we have, we will divide the pathogenesis into two group familial gastric cancer as well as sporadic cancer gastric cancer first coming to the familial gastric cancers okay so in familial gastric cancer they will seen germline loss of mutations okay loss of function mutation in the tumor suppression gene that is your cdh1 okay so there is loss of function mutation in cdh1 that predisposes to familial gastric carcinoma clear now coming to their sporadic gastric cancer okay sporadic in which the first is your sporadic diffuse gastric cancer and this sporadic diffuse gastric cancer is basically due to loss of e cadre okay this is occurring due to loss of e cadre okay this is the key step in the development of diffuse gastric cancer so if someone is asking about sporadic diffuse gastric cancer then you will reply e cadre okay there is a loss of function mutation of e cadre clear now second that is your sporadic intestinal type gastric cancer okay so here there will be mutation in apc gene that is a part of wnt pathway okay so there will be mutation in apc gene in your sporadic intestinal type gastric cancer okay sometimes there is also seen there is mutation in tb53 okay there is sometimes there is loss of function mutation in pax gene that is for apoptosis and cdkn2 cdkn2 okay so these genes are also associated with the pathogenesis of the gastric adenocarcinoma okay so this is about your gastric adenocarcinoma pathogenesis clear now last we will discuss about the morphology that is how you will see the gastric adenocarcinoma okay. so first coming to the site so most common site uh, is your pylorus and antrum okay pylorus and antrum it constitute about 50 to 60% of gastric adenocarcinoma then the remaining part cardia it constitute about 25% and then remaining user body and fundus so body and fundus constitute of about 15 to 25 percent okay so these three category which you have to focus on okay the first is your pylorus plus antrum then cardia then body and fundus clear now we have also uh, divided the, the carcinoma on the basis of your macroscopic growth pattern okay so macroscopically we have divided it okay so macroscopically divided into three types that is type one that is also known as fungating or exophytic then type 2 okay and then the last one is type 3 so type 1 is also known as exophytic or fungating or polypoid growth type 2 is flat or depressed type okay type 2 may be flat type or depressed type and type 3 is basically excavated type okay type 3 is excavated clear so at the name testing in type 1 it is a solid tumor which projects or protrudes in the lumen as a polypoid or a nodular mass clear and in flat or depressed type you are the name itself in this, uh, indicating your okay in, it is superficial flat lesion which uh, with no obvious tumor mass within the mucosa and may be slightly elevated or depressed okay and then your type 3 it is characterized by a shallow or deeply erosive okay deep, deep erosion in seen in the wall of the stomach like this so this is the erosion so this is type of erosion okay so this is the erosion this is known as excavator okay type 3 type 2 in some literature is also divided into a b and c okay based on its feature so this is a microscopic feature now coming to the that is your uh, classification of the histological subtype that is known as Lorentz classification okay that is microscopic basically Lorentz classification so Lorentz classification has first uh, divided it into two type that is intestinal type and diffuse type okay so in intestinal type the gross how we look grossly so the gross appearance is that polyploid polyploid bulky tumor will be seen okay polyploid bulky tumor clear and that may be ulcerated or may not be ulcerated then you come to the microscopy so it consists of cohesive tumor cells okay that forms your gland like tubular structure this this line is very important gland like tubular structure will be seen okay and that will resemble the adenocarcinoma of colon clear so gland like tubular structure will be seen on microscopy and here grossly you will find polyploid bulky tumor clear now second is your diffuse type okay so here diffuse gastric uh, cancer basically infiltrate deeply into the stomach without forming obvious mass lesions okay 
and here you will find a term that is known as linitis plastica this is very important okay linitis plastica basically this is flattening of the rural folds and thickening of the wall okay linitis plastica means flattening of your rural folds okay and the thickening of the stomach wall that is known as linitis plastica clear so these are some terms which you have to focus okay while going for the uh, viva examination or your uh, pg examination now moving to the next part that is uh, one more important term here on microscopy that you will see okay i am talking about diffuse okay so here the tumor cells uh, contain abundant mucin so mucin containing cell will be seen on microscopy okay and this mucin containing cell will give signet ring like appearance okay this will give signet ring like appearance here yeah? okay signet ring like appearance and sometimes it is also known as signet ring carcinoma so this is your morphology now the last part that is spread of carcinoma stomach okay so first spread is a local spread okay so it is spreads into the muscularis and serosa of the stomach okay it can invade into duodenum pancreas liver colon and retroperitone the second spread is your lymphatic spread so it spreads via submucosal and serosal lymphatic to both regional and distant lymph node and particularly the lymph node uh, participated is your supra clavicular sentinel lymph node that is known as vico okay and uh, the first clinical manifestation of an occult neoplasm is seen by using troizer sign we will discuss later on okay if that is met metastasizing into paramblical lymph nodes okay paramblical lymph node then it will be known as sister mary joseph node okay sister mary joseph node if uh, it is met metastasizing to the ovary then it will be known as kuckenberg nodules kuckenberg tumors or kuckenberg nodule okay so this is the second uh, uh, spread that is through lymphatics third is your through blood so through blood it may go into liver mainly liver but it may go into lungs as well as bones okay so this is the spread of the carcinoma stomach so last there were the clinical features so what are the clinical features so clinical features first i am discuss about advanced cancer so what are the clinical feature in advanced cancer okay so in advanced cancer you will look early, you will see early satiety will be there okay there will be bloating cases there will be distension okay there will be vomiting clear and uh, that later on can cause iron deficiency anemia here okay, iron deficiency anemia may be there so this is all about your gastric adenocarcinoma okay in next video we will discuss another topic so thank you bagi if you like the video please subscribe our channel Okay, so thanks for watching videos.